Hello students, we're going to talk about the four Marks of the Church. There's the evangelist, St. Mark, Mark Twain, Mark Zuckerberg, and Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Just kidding, those aren't the Marks we're talking about. The Marks we're talking about are four characteristics of the Church. And these characteristics are inseparable from one another. And they point out essential features of the Church and her mission. So in other words, if you're trying to find the true Church of Jesus Christ, what you do is you look for these Marks and where all of these exist together, well, you've got the real thing. Now, the thing about the marks to remember is that, in one way, they're outward manifestations that anybody can look for, anybody can see. So there, this is not like a grace in the soul, which is essentially hidden. But that grace in the soul does outward acts. Just like the marks of the church, there's a reality within the church, but they manifest themselves in a clear and visible way. Now, Anyone can see the marks of the church in one sense, but to know that they come from God and to know that they indicate that this is the true church of God, that is something that can only be known by faith. So the marks, in a sense, are evidence for the authenticity of the church. They're criteria that we look at in evaluating uh, churches claiming to be truly church. But... Um, in terms of their divine origin, that is something we can only know at the end of the day by faith. So what are the four marks of the church? Well, the church is one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. And we're going to break these down, each one. So when we say the church is one, we mean a couple of things. First of all, she has one source, God. God is the one who creates and sustains the church. Without him, it wouldn't exist. Secondly, there's one bond of charity, one love that brings the entire church together. And that charity is built on faith, showing one faith, believing in the same God together, Jesus Christ become incarnate. And once we know that one God, well, we worship him together and, and we have his sacraments. So the church is, is one that has the sacraments, all the sacraments that Christ has given. And finally, there's leadership, one governmental organization. And that's something that makes Catholicism different than uh, some other religions, uh, Christian and not, in that there is, going back 2,000 years now, one continuous governmental organization. So even though there have been kind of some changes to the structure over time, the basic structure has remained the same, and there's always been uh, a, a single leader that we can point to. The, the Bishop of Rome begins with St. Peter himself and is now occupied, the, the, the chair of Peter is now occupied by Pope Francis. Now the church is not just one, she's also holy. Why is this the case? Well, it's the case because she's loved by God, the all-holy one. And when God loves something, he makes it good. And so because the, he loves the church, he makes her holy. And so the church is united to Christ as his bride and body. That's the, the source of her holiness. But here's the thing. It's not just something that the church keeps for herself, that that holiness the church possess, possesses is meant to be given to others. And here's this beautiful painting of the scene of Pentecost. And we see this foundation of the church, Mary with the apostles together. But here's the thing. The holiness the church has is something that can be given to others. So the church not only possesses holiness, but she shares it, and she makes others holy. And the third characteristics, characteristic is that the church is Catholic. Now this is small c, Catholic. It's an adjective, and it means universal. So how is the church universal? Well, the first way that she's universal is that she receives, is, is in terms of what she receives. She gets the full Christ. Jesus Christ gives himself entirely to the church. Because she is his bride, and he's the husband, the bridegroom. And he gives the church all the means of salvation necessary. So faith, scripture, sacraments, ministry. That all, you know, she's got a complete tool bag, in other words, that she can use to do the work that Christ gives her. So she receives, has this universal reception. But even more importantly, she has a universal mission. There is no uh, race or uh, sex or language or 
geographic reason, region that is outside of the church's mission. Her job is to bring the good news to everybody. No exceptions. And finally, the, the true church is apostolic. And it's, that means, first of all, that it's founded by the apostles. This group of guys over here that Christ chooses them deliberately. And they're the ones that he sends out into the world. He says to them, he who hears you, hears me. And so what the church does is it passes along this teaching. There's a, a picture over here of, of some uh, uh, bishops and saints from the early church. And this is the creed that they came up with, uh, countering Arianism, which we studied. So the church continues to pass on the teaching of the apostles. That's another kind of essential part of her witness. And finally, the church is governed by the successors of the apostles, the pope, and together along with him, the bishops. Okay, so those are the four marks of the church. She is one holy Catholic and apostolic.